Today class, we'll be learning about the American Revolution. Well, sort of. To be specific, we won't be looking at the battles or the midnight rides or the Benedict Arnolds. Instead, we'll be taking a look at what events and ideas led to the revolution and how those ideas and events laid the foundation for a nation. To start off, we're gonna have to go back a little bit. A little bit more than that. Uh, closer, but still not quite. There we go. In 1754, anyone who was anyone in Europe had a piece of the great American pie. The two biggest world powers and rivals at the time were France and Great Britain. And since these rivals' territories brushed up against each other, it was only a matter of time before conflict broke out. And so began the Seven Years' War. The Seven Years' War is a very broad term for a series of conflicts that took place all over the world. The part that we as Americans care about is known as the French and Indian War. Long story short, Great Britain won and the 13 colonies' territory doubled in size. While Great Britain was victorious, the war had also been very expensive. And in their eyes, the fact that the colonists now had more land also meant that they had more money. And so they expected them to pay them back for this war that they just won for them. Britain began taxing the colonists to make up for all the money that they had lost during the Seven Years' War. The colonists, to put it lightly, didn't take it very well. Although the taxes weren't actually all that high, it was the principle of the thing that set the colonists. No one had consulted them about any new taxes, and with no representation in Parliament, what was to keep Britain from raising the taxes even more? In response to these new taxes, the colonists tarred and feathered British officials and boycotted British products. The British eventually got rid of the tax, but this only served to embolden the colonists and encourage even more disobedience, protests, and boycotts. Because if they could stand up to the most powerful empire in the world and get away with it, then what else could they get away with? Boycotts ended up being one of the most effective forms of protest since Britain got huge benefits from the import of consumer goods and the export of raw materials by the colonies. One of the most important things that came out of British taxes was that the colonists became more organized. They created committees of correspondence, which acted like shadow governments, and they were used to enforce boycotts, establish communication with foreign nations, set up espionage networks, and of course, tar and feather more British officials and loyalists. They were creating and enforcing policies. Kind of like a government. Alright, let's wrap this thing up. The American Revolution was a psychological revolution before it was a war for independence. So instead of thinking of it like this, think of it more like this. They're two separate events that overlap each other with the revolution leading to the war. The majority of the colonists started seeing themselves as a separate and different entity from Great Britain. They were mostly self-governing already, so why not be their own country? And during this time period, there were a lot of ideas and theories floating around from the Age of Enlightenment about the rights of man and liberty and the social contract and fighting against the institution that made breaking away from Britain seem like the natural next step.
This is me putting a video at the end.